Hey everybody, Uncle Rich here for Who's Telling the Truth. Guys, tonight's a, a special show. Today, today's date is 4-2015. Now does everybody know what 420 stands for or symbolizes? Guys, today I was sitting home and the first thing I have on in the morning is Fox News. And at 6.02 on Fox News, they announced that it's National Marijuana Day. <laughs> That's right, they called it Pot Day. So we're going to celebrate that. But the name of the show is going to be called Trickle Up Economics. We could see that good, right? Yeah. Trickle Up Economics. And guys, I asked a lot of people, especially Uncle Joey, I said, Joe, have you heard about trickle economic, trickle up ep economics? Everybody said, no, nah, I heard of trickle down economics, but, but you know, I never heard of it. Did you just make that up? And guys, i tell you what, I wish I did. I wish I could take credit for making it up. But what happened is after I came up with the idea, I Googled it, and there had to be three or four, or maybe even more people. So once I saw that, I said, it's not my idea. But guys, I, I still want to take credit for when I came up with the idea of the term where Fox News, where they, where they use, where they're prostitutes and they sell their own souls. Because when I came up with the name Foxtitutes, I went and I Googled that and I didn't see it. So if I can get credit for, you, for the term Foxtitutes, I'll be very happy. But guy, guys, tonight's show, Tonight's show is the show that you want your boss to watch. And I'm not kidding. I mean, you want to sit, you want to have him sit down and watch this because this show is going to be is going to be about Dan Price and the name of his company is Gravity Payments and guys, he just promised his employees a $70,000 a year minimum wage. I'm not kidding. It's been all over the news. All the, even Fox, we're gonna have a clip from Stuart Varney with Fox. And I tell you, guys, you know, we're always talking about changing the business model. Here's somebody that's doing something about it. And he's not some phony baloney kid because he is a kid. And when you see him, you're going to, I tell you, he's making things happen. And this is what, this is what the new business model has to be. It has to be about sharing, sharing the wealth, redistributing the wealth to where? To the middle class. It's that simple. I mean, guys, and we're going to show you some stuff tonight. We're going to show you a couple of charts because I love showing charts. And you're going to see the wealth disparagement in this country. And it's sad. But, you know, guys, first, in the beginning, you know, we always like to have fun in the show. And the fact that it's 420, you know, uh, I, I always think about, you know, with, uh, with pot and, and smoking pot and the fact that it's pot day. You know, whenever I think of smoking pot, I always think about the saying, Smoke them if you got them. And that clip we get from the movie Spaceballs. And we've used it on this show, but it's such a good clip. But before we play it, I just want, you know, one day I was watching Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. And he was, I forget who was interviewing him, but he said, he said, Tommy, do you, uh, do you get high every day? Do you smoke pot every day? And he goes, no. He goes, some days I forget. <laughs> and guys, if that isn't the truth, you know? But, you know, and instead of calling it marijuana and weed and all this other stuff, guys, why don't we start calling it what it is? Medi-wana. There should really be a question mark at the end of this. You know, the guy that writes up the, uh, my, uh, my wife writes up the sign and there wasn't enough room for a question mark. But guys, this is what I, 
You know, I call marijuana marijuana. And why don't you, if you guys want to use the term, you're welcome to it. But guys, to start the show, we're going to play a clip from, from uh, Spaceballs and Ludacris Speed and smoke them if you got them. So, Judy, hit it. Prepare to attack. Prepare to attack on the count of three. One, two, three. What happened? Where are they? I don't know, sir. They must have hyperjets on that thing. And what do we got on this thing? A Cuisinart? No, sir. We'll find them, catch them. Yes, sir. Prepare ship for light speed. No, 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 light speed is too slow. Light speed too slow? Yes, we're going to have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> Ludicrous speed. Sir, we've never gone that fast before. I don't know if the ship can take it. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? Prepare ship! Prepare ship for ludicrous speed. Fasten all seatbelts. See if all entrances and exits. Close all shops in the mall. Cancel the free range circuits. Secure all animals in the zoo. Give me that, you petty excuse for an officer. Smoke if you got them. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's Mel Brooks at his best. But guys, <laughs> did, you, did you see John Candy? He's he's half half dog, half man. <laughs> he's his own best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, wait, we're not going to stop. <laughs> now we're going to have Bill Maher, and Bill Maher is going to do the next clip on 420. So, Judy, let the fun continue. Hit it. So, there are two <laughs> holidays coming up. Earth Day. Earth Day, people. Earth Day. Liberals love Earth Day. <laughs> That's Wednesday, and the other holiday is 420. Now, do, oh. okay. do, do all you panelists know what 420 is? I'm a little, I'm a little okay. shaky on that. Let me explain it to you, John. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank God. Now, I it's, know. Some, I'll, I'll man up here. No, I don't. No, I don't. Really? Okay. Some years ago, there was a bunch of stoners at some high school, I think it was in California, who got high every day at 4.20 in the afternoon, much like the way the English drink tea yeah. at 4. You didn't okay. know that one? My, no, my people drink bourbon at 5. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then 420, April 20th, became kind of a stoner holiday. 
And we are trying to get this to be a real holiday. If you go on HBO, our HBO website, HBO.com, there's a link there to change.org, and you can try to do that. And you know, since 24 states now have marijuana being legal in some form, yeah. Yeah. we think it should be a real holiday. You could get a Hallmark card for it, for sure. It, it's more worthy than Co <laughs> Columbus <laughs> Day. Why should we celebrate that racist psychopath? <laughs> so, um, I think non-stoners may not realize that we stoners <laughs> on 420, it's just like any other holiday. We have rituals, we have family over, we exchange gifts, we have decorations, and I'm sorry, we sing songs. What happens on Stoner Day? You just don't do anything? Is no, that like no, you just celebrate? No, we, we read, Twas the Night Before 420. <laughs> Would you like to hear? Yes. <laughs> "'Twas the night before 420, and all through the crib, not a creature was stirring, not even... Did you hear something? <laughs> <laughs> was the door locked? <laughs> I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts from the gym. I just settled down to watch Adult Swim. <laughs> the bowls were all packed and the vapes with great care, in the hopes Willie Nelson soon would be there. <laughs> When from out in the yard came a crash and a bellow, whatever it was, it was harching my mellow. And what to my wandering eyes should appear? It was a tall circus clown molesting a deer. <laughs> no, no, wait, ju just a tree. <laughs> I made a mistake. I guess I should mention I was thoroughly baked. <laughs> then out of the shadows, I saw it myself. It was Willie Nelson and Snoop, his jolly old elf. <laughs> and a man who was grinning and wearing a hoodie. I knew in an instant it was good old St. Woody. <laughs> I knew by their manner and the lovely aroma that they'd all brought me something to cure my glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> we lit up a joint and ate a pot brownie and soon were as high as a young Robert Downey. <laughs> when out on the lawn I heard such a crash, I ran to the toilet to flush all our stash. I looked at the people and what did I spot? The chief of police and eight hungry cops. And then in a twinkling, I heard overhead a fully armed SWAT team. I thought we were dead. Then in they all flew like geese through a fog. They barked out commands and shot my poor dog. But he'll be okay. <laughs> they were after a pothead who matched my description. But I reached in my pocket and pulled out my prescription. <laughs> They looked at it closely. They began to whine and to grouse, but they knew they had nothing. So I said, get out of my house. I said, you don't have a warrant. You don't have a writ. Happy 420 to all and to all some good shit. Okay. <laughs>
you know, not only does, um, does Dan, not only does he want to enrich his employees by putting more money in their pocket, but maybe, maybe he'll give your boss some ideas. In any event, guys, you're going to become aware of gravity payments. So if your company uses credit cards at all, pick up the phone and call Gravity Pay. See if they could save you some money. There's only one or two things that can happen. Either they can or they can't. And what happens, guys, all they're doing is, you know, when you go to buy something, the banks charge a VIG. And I call it a VIG because that's, it's like you're dealing with a bookie. You got to pay up for this. Well, the bank charges a VIG, especially to the small people, to the little businesses. But what Gravity Payments does is they take the small businesses and they group them together. So now you have one large business. Like a credit card company will go to Walmart, hey, you want to use our credit card? We'll charge you 1% interest because you're going to do $10 million worth of business. Gravity payments will come in and they'll say, you know what, right now, because you're a small business, they're making you pay a premium. They're giving you the old bada bing and you don't have a choice. But when you sign up with gravity payments, you're part of a group. You start saving as a group. It's called socializing. Joey, Uncle Joey ain't going to like this. But it's just like the insurance, guys. We showed you last week. The amount of people that are now uninsured has been the lowest it's been since I think they've been. And why? Because we're all buying the insurance as a group. So, guys, let's meet. The, now, you know, uh, Dan Price, <laughs> the price is right. I don't know what else to say about this guy. He's been Entrepreneur of the Year. He's met the president. Um, this, uh, he's, before he even started this idea of sharing the wealth with his employees, he was even giving them money where they can donate $1,000 a year to whatever charity they wanted. That's the type of guy this guy is. But guys, enough of me talking. Let's meet Dan Price. So Judy, hit it. Dan Price. Dan Price. We founded Gravity on one simple principle. We really never want to make screw you money like the rest of the financial services industry. Guys, they don't want to make screw you money. And what screw you money, screw you money, is when the bank says to you, you play ball our way or you don't play ball at all that's it guys it's time to change the business model so let's watch the full clip because we never you know on this show we always like to play everything that i get off of youtube so judy let's have the full clip the now man you're so about to meet it. is a veteran when it comes to the credit card business he helps about 10,000 businesses process your credit card payments. And he's not even 30 years old. Dan Price. Dan Price. Dan Price. We founded Gravity on one simple principle. We really never want to make screw you money like the rest of the financial <coughs> services industry. Our industry really has the deck stacked in its own favor. And it has a, a culture and its own set of rules that everybody pretty much plays by. And, you know, I think the idea of the industry is don't rock the boat. We're all going to get rich. And, you know, why would you challenge that? Gravity Payments reduces the costs and headaches associated with accepting credit cards. Um, accepting credit cards is actually a major cost for small and medium-sized businesses. And there's a lot of inefficiency and not a lot of value being added. So we're trying to change that, make it really easy for people to accept payments, and also allow them to do it in a way that saves them a lot of money. When I was in a band, uh, there was a, a coffee shop that we would play at, and the owner of the coffee shop was incredible and really loved her business. 
she was not necessarily the best business person in terms of being financially savvy. So I helped her redo her gift and loyalty systems. I helped her um, get a good deal on her credit card processing. And, uh, you know, she actually told a bunch of her friends about me. And then I got introduced to a few other business owners, helped them out with similar things. And before you knew it, I had a nice small practice of a couple hundred clients. For us, you know, we have, we have a, a different purpose for our business. So, you know, we're, thinking about those independent business owners and what's good for them because larger businesses with more negotiating power, they get treated fairly, at least by comparison. And so why not give that same fair treatment to the independent business owner? The executives of our competitors, you know, are, are sometimes upset at me or upset at us. And they're saying, you know, why are you guys giving that to your customers? Why are you providing that service for them? One of the things I love most about my job is the opportunity to work with such amazing people. Every single person that works here is a key decision maker. And that's a culture that we've just maintained from the beginning. And it doesn't matter if they need to break some rules. It doesn't matter if they need to go outside of the scope of their job. They're willing to do whatever it takes. We're like-minded, we like serving others. And the chance to do that together in a great team environment is really special. We give about $1,000 to each employee that they can give to any charity each year. And we volunteer as a company. So people think that that's the top thing that we do to impact our community. And I don't believe that at all. I think that's a token. But the number one thing we can do to improve our community and invest in our community is just purely by supporting our independent business owner clients. At Gravity, we exist to stand with the little gal or guy who believes in the American dream and is willing to work to chase it. The guy that believes in the American dream and is willing to work hard. What do the conservatives always say? I'm a hard worker. Yeah, you're a hard worker because you're ripping everybody off, charging them a premium for their credit cards when you don't have to. And you know, uh, like, like he said, Dan said, we never want to make screw you money like the rest of the financial services industries. You know, he said the, the, he said the industry has the deck stacked. Yeah, they do. They got the ball. You know, and they said, don't rock the boat. Hey, never mind rock the boat. We're going to capsize it. Why? Because they pushed us over the edge. And you know, guys, when the you know the one percent, and when you see the wage disparagement, and the way the middle class is being sold out, but yet you have companies like this, and guys, we haven't gotten to into the good stuff yet because now you're going to see what his employees and uh, have to say, and you're also going to learn a little bit more about the business model. So, Judy, let's have the next clip. Values drive our, our company and drive everything that we do. Honesty, you know, fighting for the little guy. It's really our passion. Every day, we help everyone. And we really try to just put their needs above anything else. Gravity Payments reduces the costs and headaches of accepting credit cards. The credit card processing industry favors big businesses and takes advantage of small businesses. Larger businesses with negotiating power get treated fairly. Why not take that same fair treatment and apply that to all businesses? We're thinking about our local business owners and what's good for them. We saw a few local business owners who needed help with their businesses. Those people told their friends and soon we had a few hundred clients. And then Gravity Payments was born. Guys, it's all about businesses helping businesses. You know, it's, it's about getting rid of the, the corporate model where people put profits before people. You know, uh, and, and we're, we're just going to show you how they do it. And we're, you know, this guy, he was, uh, got a special award from the Small Business Ad, uh, Administration. He met the president. He was entrepreneur. I mean, this, this guy is no phony baloney. And when you see what he really wants to do, 
But this is the last feel-good one, and then we're going to get down to the money. So, Judy, let's have the next clip. The man you're about to meet is a veteran when it comes to the credit card business. He helps about 10,000 businesses process your credit card payments. And he's not even 30 years old. King 5's Joe Fryer introduces us to Dan Price. And we thought about instituting like a new KPI. As the saying goes, uh, age is but a number. Anyone else? Dan Price knows a thing or two about numbers. That is awesome. He's co-founder and CEO of Gravity Payments, which helps small businesses process credit cards. And the thing that the company you, is uh, now 10 years old. As this was a cover story um, in the Seattle PI. But it was only five years ago Dan started getting a charge literally of publicity. It's because up until 2008. I hid my age. You see, Dan launched the company from his dorm room here at Seattle Pacific University when he was just 19. When I started the company at 19, people would ask me, like, how old are you, right? And I had two, two responses. I would either just laugh or I would say, I'm 12. Can I get you guys some cupcakes? Cupcake Royale was one of his first clients. And I remember when he came out to the, to the cafe to meet up. But... Wait a minute, uh, you're, you're Dan. <laughs> he was, I think, 19 at the time. Yeah, I think by 23, he felt comfortable enough to reveal his age. I felt like at 23, if there was like a, a driver's license for business owners, I was old enough to get it. And the publicity soon followed for the processing prodigy who was dubbed young and in charge. Young and in charge, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the in charge part, but I guess I was young. <laughs> As a young boy, Price was homeschooled until he turned 12. Then in seventh grade, he formed a rock band. Eighth grade, we started touring. Ninth grade, we were touring regularly, recorded an album. As both bassist and manager, the band became his first business, where Price got his first taste of processing credit cards. So it's just like your. 16 year old kind of tech guy, but specialized in payments. <laughs> Three years later, he launched his company okay. with a focus on helping small businesses rein in credit card fees. It seems like an unnecessary fee that's just stealing money out of the back of their pocket. That's important to places like Cupcake Royale, where the transactions are small, yet 70% of their customers pay with cards. Really, really confusing and difficult to navigate, and Dan was really great at just kind of breaking that down. Today, Gravity employs 100 people, catering an office lunch every week with food from their clients. It looks awesome. And adhering to a strict open door policy. Price even shares an office with other managers to encourage communication. Like any kind of physical separation, there's an emotional barrier that's created that's hard to break through. Once you have, I don't know, probably I would guess like. 3,000 customers. Price also mentors alumni from UW's business school, fellow youngsters looking to follow Maybe even in his footsteps. I think Dan is the epitome of a great small business owner. So impressed was the Small Business Administration, it named Price the National Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2010, an honor that came with a presidential meeting. To have all that at such a young age, Dan is number one in our books. This year, Price delivered the keynote address at the SBA's regional awards banquet. On the same night, GeekWire named him Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Price attended both programs, yet somehow found time to honor a third commitment, a late-night co-rec soccer game. Ended up scoring uh, the game-winning goal right at the end. And that was just as special as the other two. This one's particularly exciting. Success seems to follow Price wherever he goes. But don't think he's taking anything for granted. The moment you think you have something figured out is the moment you slip over into being naive. Because I don't know everything, but at least I have an appreciation for how little I know. Now 29 years old, and also Dan Price is still young I wouldn't say very and hard. still very much Class four in charge. The type of credit card and expiration date. Joe Fryer. King 5 News. And like any good son, Price credits his father for much of his success, saying dad taught him all about value. Guys, did you notice that he was honest enough to say that he understands that he doesn't un understand everything? It's called learning. And that's why we're here. You know, to learn, to learn together. Because I don't have all the answers and I don't know all the answers. But you know what? I'll take the time to look it up. And, you know, this is what separates me from people like Marty and Uncle Joe. And uh, 
before we get to the to the really to the really good stuff, you notice how we said it's like you know these credit it's like stealing money out of the back of somebody's pocket when you charge them an exorbitant rate and you don't do anything to deserve this money. It's like when the George Washington Bridge was being built. You know, Henry Ford said, well, how much is it going to cost to build a bridge? And he said, well, it's going to cost $60 million. And he says, man, $60 million to buy all the steel and the, and the concrete and everything? They said, no, 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 no. The steel and the concrete and all the labor, everything to build a bridge only costs $30 million. But we have to get $60 million so we can pay off the interest on the loans that we got to borrow. Guys, this is crazy. What are we, stupid? And it's time to change the business model. And the next clip, we're going to start showing you all the national networks, including Fox, and how they all embrace the idea and how exactly how each, the first one is from NBC. So we'll see how NBC handled it and we'll move down the line. Can any Guys, it's a different way of doing business. Now, some people that work for him automatically doubled their pay that day. Can you imagine that? The one guy we're going to show you later, he was making $33,000 a year. He automatically gets bumped up to $50,000 a year. Now, guys, this is what I call trickle-up economics. Now, let's say the guy that got bumped up to $50,000, all of a sudden, he can now buy that house he's been dreaming about. So he goes and he puts a down payment on the house. Well, the real estate agent that sold him the house, she's going to get a healthy commission. The car that she's been driving has been a little shabby. So she takes that trickle up money and she goes and buys a new car. Well, the guy that sells her the new car, he's been promising to get his kids that new plasma TV. So with the added income, now he can go buy it. So he goes and buys the plaza TV, and the kid that sold him the plaza TV can now go have a nice dinner at Widow Brown's. And after he gets done eating, he can leave a healthy tip for the waiter. And if the waiter needs to do anything, he has the money to do it. So guys, that's what I call trickle up economics. When you spend the money into the community, it reverberates through everything. Everybody gets a piece of the action. When you give the money to the 1%, guess what happens? It stays there. Why? I don't know why. You try to explain that to me. I can't understand it. The next clip we're going to do is from CBS. Guys, you're gonna, the more you hear about this guy, the more you're going to love him. So, Judy, hit it. Supporters of equal pay for men and women have declared today Equal Pay Day to highlight the wage gap between the sexes. They say that a woman needed to work all of last year right through this, the 104th day of 2015, to earn what a man made in 2014 alone. Well, everyone is getting a raise at a Seattle-based company. Anthony Mason now with a story you'd probably like your boss to see. Dan Price made the announcement of the pay raise at his company's quarterly meeting. 
and we're going to have a minimum uh, $70,000 pay rate for everyone that works here. As the CEO explained that minimum salaries at Gravity Payments, a Seattle-based credit card processing company, would jump to $50,000 immediately and to $70,000 within three years, his 120 employees sat in stunned silence before bursting into applause and giving their boss a standing ovation. I think it's life-changing for everybody in various ways. For Jose Garcia, a 29-year-old equipment supervisor with $54,000 in student debt, his $33,000 salary jumps to $50,000 immediately. And maybe I cried when I called my mom. <laughs> Price says he was inspired by a Princeton study that showed that emotional well-being rises as incomes rise up to $75,000. So I realized that people that are making less than that, there's an emotional cost that they have every single day. And you only get to live once. Entrepreneur Magazine's Entrepreneur of the Year in 2014. Price says the move will cut his company's profits almost in half for now. To cushion the blow, he slashed his own million dollar paycheck to $70,000. I want to be a part of the solution to inequality in this country. And so if corporate America also wants to be a part of that solution, that would make me. Guys, he's going <clears> to <throat> he's going to cut his profits in half. But he's putting his people before his profit. And this has to be the new culture. This is the way it's got to be. I mean, and we're going to get a little bit more involved, but guys, the next clip, you better be sitting down for the next clip because the next clip is from Fox News and from Stuart Varney. And you guys know how much we love to give Stuart Varney the old bada bing. I mean, because Stuart Varney's an out and out liar. He is your definition of a fox -tute. I am not kidding you. You know, and, and sometimes when I watch this guy, I say to myself, well, you'll get, you know, we'll play the clip and you'll get a little flavor. But I mean, we've shown stuff with Stuart Varney before that you just say to yourself, why? I mean, you could see how he sold his soul to the Koch brothers and the 1%. So, Judy, let's have the next one. I want to bring you something really fantastic here. Ah. I'm going to bring you the man who is making $70,000 a year, the minimum wage at his company. Lunatic of all lunatics, Dan Price, CEO of Gravity Payments, is here. There's the man. This is the man who's doing it. Are you a socialist? I'm not a socialist. Okay, let me explain whatever what you're doing here. Yeah. You make a million dollars a year. You run your own company. Right. You read a survey that says happiness increases if you get towards seventy, seventy five thousand dollars a year. Right. And you want to spread some happiness within your company, right? What I really want to do, I, I want to have purpose, right? What I love about my work is that I have a purpose every day. I'm passionate about independent businesses, saving them money, giving them good payment processing services, and my team members are too. But sometimes if you're a little bit below what it takes to scrape by, that can be distracting from that passion, from that purpose that you have for what you do. And so I'm all about achieving at the maximum amount, but I want to remove those distractions and basically help people move forward. Look, I think it's a terrific idea. I think you're an extremely generous person, and that, that's, that's a fact, you are. So you make a million dollars a year, but you're taking a pay cut down to $70,000 a year, correct? That's correct. And you're taking some money from your profits and chucking it all into the big pot, so everybody makes $70,000 minimum. Yeah, but let me be clear. I think that this is going to be a great thing for our company. I think it's going to be a great ROI. I think what, people that don't think it's going to be an ROI, they're looking too short term. When, when you, you look ROI, long that, that's return on investment. Return You're on investment. You're going to get something back for We're, your generosity. Absolutely. And I actually think that the way we look at it is about trust and it's about values. So when you take care of people, they tend to take care of you. And about a year and a half ago, we instituted unlimited vacation for all all of our team and sure enough you know productivity went up paid paid time off even though it's unlimited didn't really go up when you trust people they really take care of you okay um, 
you, you can do this without raising the price of your service. Correct. You, that? you don't think you lose any kind of motivation because if everybody's up at that level, are they motivated to keep climbing that food chain? I thought about that. You know, the other thing is I don't want anyone stuck at my company because they can't afford to work somewhere else. They'll have to take a pay cut. So those are some of the things that we have to work through. And I think with this change, we'll have different problems, different challenges. But I think what you see is inequality in this country is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And a lot of times people are proposing government solution like in Seattle where I live, we have the $15 right. an hour minimum wage. And for me, that's a sign of failure that we didn't self-regulate and self-govern. And had we done things like this, there'd be no need for an that's outside entity. And look, I don't approve of government rules saying you've got to pay this, you've got to pay that. I don't personally approve of that because that's government intervention. Right. You on the same team as me? You know, I would like to think that if we step up, it won't be necessary. I think sometimes government has to intervene and regulate, and sometimes they should. Not everybody's going to do this. Correct. I mean, look, you're a young guy. What, you're 30 years old? Is 30 it? years old. You're 30 years old. I don't know whether you've got responsibilities like family and all that junk. I don't know that. But here's the point. Not everybody can take a pay cut from a million to 70,000. Not everybody wants to take a big risk organizing a company, work long hours, and then give it away. You know, I think I should be paid market rate so that I as a CEO can be replaced if I can't work for some reason. And so I'll get back up to it. it that, that's not an issue. It might take me two, three, four, five years, and I'm willing to, to make that investment. So again, this is a short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain. But it is your company. It is my company, so it's my decision. And I appreciate your point, how it's nice for me to be able to make this decision. And I agree, but I do think there is also a moral imperative of us as leaders to try to do the best we can for everybody. And I think if we step up and take these problems seriously, there will be less need for politics to be involved. Okay. I looked at the videotape when you made the announcement. I think that's gone viral, by the way. It's, it was crazy. You lit up the world with this thing. Every guy, look at him. Every single guy, ones that I can see, most of them, they got beards. What's with that? You know, we're in Seattle. We got to be a little hipster. Look, they're all over the place. Cool. Beard after beard after beard. We Who's like it? those beards right now. You know, growing it in, just trying to look good. Right. It's a Seattle thing. It's a Seattle thing. It's a Brooklyn thing. It's a young people thing. We're enjoying it. Young people? Yeah, yeah. Is that a dig at me? <laughs> I have to tell you though. The thing that will surprise you, people keep asking me, are getting flooded with resumes. I'm getting flooded from my clients and other independent businesses that want to do business with us, that want to purchase from our company because of these values. So it's a little bit different spin, and there okay. actually is a competitive element to this, which I think you'll like. <laughs> I do like it. Yeah. Uh, was it a publicity stunt? No, it wasn't. And I actually didn't, I, you know, I thought that we might get a little bit, but bit of publicity and it could Are pay you five a or leftist 10%. who wants to lead the charge for egalitarianism? Is that you? I'm not a leftist or a righty, uh, but what I do want to do is I want to find a practical solution to solve the problem. Okay. And if Republicans or Democrats or progressives or conservatives want to take credit for it, so be it. Let's fix the problem. I'll be happy. I don't care about the credit. Look, I'm not on the other side of the fence from you. I think what you've done is a terrific thing. Uh, I think you're a very generous man. I take my hat off to you. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. I, and you're going to follow suit, I've, I've heard. You've heard? From who? Oh, that's what everyone's <laughs> Name saying. Name your source. It's buzzing all around the office. That, you know. <laughs> oh, you really? Yeah. <laughs> great idea, by the way. Great some, idea. some people I invite back onto the program, but you, you're, you're out of here. <laughs> Dan Price, everyone. Thank Guys, did you hear what he said? We need a capitalist solution to a social problem, a social issue. And guys, I think he's got it. Now we'll see as time goes on, did he make a mistake? I don't know. But you know what, we'll find out. You know, a lot of people are gonna say, oh Rich, this is just a brilliant marketing ploy. Well, you know what, if it was a brilliant marketing ploy, good for him. Because I tell you what, he's got me telling people to pick up the phone to see if his company can save him money. And like I said before, there's only one or two things that can happen. Yes or no? So guys, don't be foolish. If you own a small business, if you own any business that takes credit cards, if we can save you some money, do it. That's all. And guys, the next clip is gonna be with MSNBC with one of my favorites. Bernie Sanders. And I tell you, you know, Bernie likes this plan. But guys, 
I tell you, everybody's falling in love with this kid. So, Judy, let's have the next clip. MSNBC. Here we go. Policy change. You know, I think they were a little stunned at first. Like, did he just say that? That was the CEO of Gravity Payments, Dan Price, announcing to his 120 employees that every one of them will soon be earning at least $70,000 a year and that he's slashing his own salary to help pay for it. Dan Price joins us now from New York. It's great to have you on. Sam Stein and Caddy Kay are back with us. We also have independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont with us who tweeted a note of congratulations to Dan Price. Very nice, Senator Sanders. We'll get to you in just a moment. But first, Dan Price, I think Sam Stein really crystallized it in the break. He had a question for you. Go ahead, Sam. What is it? It's what you were thinking. Say what you were thinking. Uh, no, saying. I don't want to say that. All right. Go ahead, Are you Sam. crazy? Go ahead. Are, you crazy? Take it. Are you crazy? No, no, it's very kind of you to do this to your employees. Um, what's the, f actually, I'm curious, what has the reaction been in terms of people wanting to work for your company or applying to work for your company? Do you see an uptick in the applicants, essentially? You know, we've just been overwhelmed by emotion, to be honest with you. This has been a big thing. Um, I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. It's been in my heart. When I started the company, the most I could afford to pay was $24,000 a year, no health care benefits. And, that, and some of those people are still with me. So I've been used to kind of feeling guilty and wishing I could do better, wishing I could be part of the solution to this inequality problem. And I was really excited to try to come up with something to at least try and make it work. So I might be crazy. You, you might be. You just might be. Do you think this will uh, increase productivity, the quality of the product? Uh, that you, I mean, what is it that drove this beyond inequality? And also, because I would do... I, I always talk about this being a great. I would never want Judy. to run a company if the people who worked for me <clears throat> didn't live did very well or didn't this. live, you know, in a way that was appropriate. And people would probably say back to me, Dan Price, you're a terrible manager. Yeah, you know, um, I think that's. I think what it's about here is we're trying to find a capitalist solution to a very large done? social problem that just keeps getting that's worse it. and worse. I mean, you look on the, at the statistics on inequality, and it just keeps getting worse. And in my own city of Seattle, it's getting less and less affordable for somebody to kind of make ends meet. And so we looked and we saw there's actually a study done in 2010 by Princeton that said around $70,000 or so, money makes a big difference to happiness and not having enough money can have an impact on emotional health and all those types of sure. things. And in my mind, when you actually solve that, people can just focus on their work. So I'm not looking for, you know, a carrot right, let's, or a stick, let's but what go. I'm looking for is allowing people let's to, go to number unleash 13. their passion and Message continue to serve our now. clients and not be distracted then, by money. Uh, so, uh, Senator Sanders, that, what did you think really of this? Good. I mean, is he a terrible manager? Or is he <laughs> <laughs> I think what Dan has so we, done is so we already got him here. So what we'll do is we'll go to number. I hope it sets we're going to go to number thirteen. Uh, companies all over this country. Look, corporate profits are at an all-time high, and yet today, ninety-nine percent of oh, all new income is going to the top one percent. The top one tenth of one percent owns yeah. more wealth than the bottom now, can you, ninety percent. Uh, get so this the two issue of income too? and wealth okay. inequality so I want to bring is the major issue we face and Dan has shown what a decent company can do and by the way I bet it pays off yeah I bet workers feel ownership they're gonna work harder they're gonna feel part of the team and I bet it, it, it becomes a good business a model. gamble worth taking caddy Dan how concerned are you about the impact that this might have on company profits one way or another have hmm. you done any kind of risk analysis absolutely uh, on this calculation and then the other thing is, is have you heard from any other companies who might be interested in what you've just done Absolutely. Actually, I've gotten, uh, I've become totally overwhelmed with emails from uh, clients of ours who are business owners, small business owners, medium-sized business owners, that they're really proud of this. And the overwhelming message I've heard uh, from my clients are, you know, I might not be able to afford to do what you did, but I'm working to try to get there someday. And for me, there's a moral imperative that comes with leadership to do what's right for those that you're leading and those that you've made promises to. And for us, first and foremost, that's those independent business is, you know, uh, processing their credit cards for cheaper. But secondly, the, the entire team uh, I'm leading and I'm responsible partially to make sure that they succeed and continue to grow and improve. Dan Price, thank you very much.
Guys, I tell you, I really appreciate Bernie Sanders. I mean, I appreciate everything he does. And uh, Judy, can we just throw up one of those slides quickly? I just want to show you guys about the, um, you know, the, uh, the, there we go. Guys, this is from the um, uh, Congressional Budget Office. And take a look at the, the, the red mark is the top 1%, and guys, look at everybody else. I mean, so you see, I mean, and this is for, like I said, the Congressional bu Budget Office. But guys, the last clip we're going to play tonight is a message for humanity. And, uh, you know, this is something we have to take seriously. So Judy, we'll, we're not going to have enough time for the whole clip. So what you do is if you can come back to me, roll the credits, and then give me 15 seconds at the end. But we want to try to get as much of this clip in as possible. So hit it. <coughs> Judy, you want number 13? There we go. I'm sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful. But we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. For those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate. The unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite!
Can you hear me? Wherever you are, look up, Hannah. The clouds are lifting. The sun is breaking through. We are coming out of the darkness into the light. We are coming into a new world, a kindly world, where men will rise above their hate, their greed, and brutality. Look up, Hannah. The sun. Go ahead. Guys, pretty heavy, huh? And I mean, that's what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is why we're here. This is why we do the show. This is why we surround ourselves with question marks. So we can learn stuff. So we can share it. So we don't rip each other off and take advantage of each other. What could be simpler than that? Oh, and the last thing I got to say, guys... Our buddy Kurt's still in the hospital. So, Kurt, I hope this show finds you better, kid. Yeah, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, so keep talking. But, guys, you know, getting back to what we started with, remember, you know, <laughs> it's 420, and when every, anybody ever says marijuana, just how oh, you're talking about marijuana, <laughs> and are you talking about you know, doing stuff where we have capitalist solutions for social problems. Say goodnight, Rich. Guys, goodnight, Rich. We'll see everybody next week, guys. Take care.